I've got a sound clip from RFK on gun control. So that question has been uh, answered and settled uh, as far as RFK Jr.'s stand on gun control. Um, well, maybe we should do that one now. Okay, I've got an audio here. Let me cue it up. We can listen to it. And then uh, if anyone wants to, we can uh, discuss it. Okay. Uh, my position on the gun control is I'm not going to take away anybody's guns. I'm, you know, I'm, um, I'm a constitutional absolutist, and he, uh, so, you know, we can argue about whether the Second Amendment was intended to protect guns, but that argument in, is now been settled by the Supreme Court, and uh, and it has a very and the Supreme Court, you know, the Antonia. Uh, Antonin Scalia's decision is a very expansive interpretation of the right to own a gun. But more importantly, I don't, you know, anybody who tells you that by, with incremental changes or incremental laws in regulating guns, and by the way, I want to say this, I have two members of my family that were killed in gun violence. So, you know, I take, I understand the heartbreak that this is causing to so many Americans. It's touched my family directly, and I I, I know as president that you are going to expect me and I'm going to do everything I can to reduce gun violence in this country. I think one of the tools that has been taken out of my hands is uh, is taking away people's guns. I don't think it's the right thing right now because the, it, it will just polarize our country. I've lived in r rural areas of this country. I know how integrated gun culture is in those areas and how important it is to them from a in the way they view the constitution i also know we're living in a time when the constitution has been on un, under attack all the other amendments in an unprecedented way and how that would be seen by people who believe strongly in the in the second amendment as part of a systematic assault on our bill of rights and i don't want to get into that debate I want to stop the school shootings. And if it comes down to protecting the schools the way that we protect airlines, I will do that. I do not want any more children dying in our schools. I also am going to look very closely at the role of psychiatric drugs in these events. It's about there time There are no good studies something. right now that... Uh, that should have been done years ago on this issue because there's a tremendous uh, uh, circumstantial evidence that those like SSRIs and benzos and other drugs are doing this. There's something happening in our in our country right now that is not happening anywhere else in the world and has never happened in human history. And you have to look at some of the, almost all of these drugs. If you look at their manufacturer's inserts, they include a side effect of homicidal and suicidal behavior. That's right. And prior to the, in the introduction of Prozac, we had almost no, uh, none of these events in our country, and we've never seen them in his human history, where people walk into a, a schoolroom of children or strangers and start shooting people. There's other nations that have as many guns per capita as we do, like Switzerland. Switzerland, the last school shooting was 21 years ago. We have one every 21 hours. The one thing that we have that's different than anybody in the world is the amount of psychiatric drugs our children are taking and, and our people are taking. And we need to look at that, and NIH should have done that years ago, but they will not do it, and they'll block other people from doing it because they are because they're working not for us, but for the pharmaceutical industry, That's and this right. is their major profit center today. And so Public nobody wants to hear none of those. Industry. You know, the pharma does not want to hear about any problems with SSRIs. But I will do those studies immediately when I get into office, and we're going to get the truth. Something, it's something. You know, guns, the proliferation of guns, clearly a bet violence. But but anybody who tells you that they can remove enough guns, AR-15s or whatever, by tinkering at the margins and get to the kind of the, the situation that they have in Western Europe is pulling your leg. It's not going to happen. We need to look now at other solutions. And, we, and the only way we're ultimately going to get gun controls in this country is through consensus, and that consensus cannot happen when we're all at each other's throats. 
We need to assure the public, people who feel insecure about the Constitution, that our Constitution is no longer under threat, that nobody wants to come and take away their guns, and that will bring people to the table and say, okay, how do we protect our children? And, uh, and that's what I'm going to try to do as president. And there you have it. RFK on gun control. Um, bringing in, uh, I've discussed this many times over the years. Every time there's a gun shooting, you look at the drugs, the SSRIs. And the public schools have a lot to do, with, take a lot of blame because uh, these women can't stand boys being boys. And because boys are disruptive. Boys are made to be disruptive. Boys are not made to sit in a chair for eight hours a day. Who can stand? I can't stand it. I'm a man. I sit, I'm sitting here in a chair right now, but I can't do it eight hours a day. I'm going to be getting up and going for a walk at least once every couple hours or more, several times an hour throughout the day. You'll catch me getting up. I got to get up out of that chair and walk around. One thing is not healthy to sit in a chair that long. Yeah. So uh, if he does that, if he follows through with it, he's got my vote. You know, if, 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 if there's any chance out of all of the candidates out there, this is the guy who should be president for the time that we're living in. And I said uh, several years ago on this topic that uh, once RFK does his study and investigation uh, into the SSRIs that he mentioned as being the cause of these shootings, which it seems obvious to me that they are, to a lot of people that they are, uh, that perhaps Congress uh, should pass legislation stating that anyone, this would go to doctor-patient relationship, but I think for public safety it might be necessary that anyone who has subscribed SSRI drugs that have the side effects of uh, homicide and suicide uh, as a side effect uh, that these should be required to give up their firearms while they're under the influence of these drugs until they're cleared by their doctor. I know the drug companies wouldn't like that very much, but With the track record of these drugs and what they've done to our society and what they are continuing to do to our society, I think it is very necessary. And I don't think it's an infringement on our right to bear arms if we are taking drugs that have specific side effects that make us a danger to ourselves and others. Okay, And uh, it is true that people could find other ways but other ways to kill people if they really want to do homicide and commit suicide, uh, at least there would be some check on their power to do that. And we'll see what happens out of this. I, and this, for this one reason alone, because of the SSRI drugs and uh, RFK's stance on these things, I think that uh, he is the best presidential candidate out there Anyway, uh, that was from that was a clip from the interview he did, so-called interview that he did on Twitter. I don't like the interviews on Twitter. Um, I hate to say it, but Musk, uh, e- Elon Musk, doesn't belong on radio. <laughs> Just listen to the guy. Uh, he's not an interviewer, okay? But I am I am glad for the forum and that these things could come out. But I had to wait. I had to, I had to listen to the whole thing looking for that clip, and it was almost two hours long. But I learned quite a bit uh, about, uh, quite a bit more about uh, RFK. And yeah, he's the man. Uh, Donald Trump is not the man. <laughs> he's not half the man RFK is. Now, RFK is not worship your worshipful master or anything like that, like a lot of people think Donald Trump is. These are just men. But I like where this man stands, and and he is awakened on a lot of... I mean, he has fought back hard against the the vaccines and he has been fighting back hard against them for many years and i think he ought to be applauded for that alone anyway i'm going into a break 
Uh, you're listening to Cross the Border. This is a live Prophecy Reality Edition. I'll be back in a few minutes. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 